Hey, what's up, Alex here. It's been quite some time since my last video. Apparently, my time has been sucked to a game way too long, way longer than I expected. But now I'm back, going to take a break from gaming, which means my videos are going to come in much more frequently. For this video, I'm going to talk about Home Assistant for newbies, which is also what some of you have requested. But this is not going to be a detailed step-by-step -step configuration guide telling you exactly where and what to click because there are already many Home Assistant channels and detailed guides on YouTube already. What I'm going to do instead is to give you a very high-level planning guide, something like a quick start guide so that you'll be more confident to get started or migrate from your existing smart home platforms to Home Assistant. There are many advantages of using Home Assistant, but I'll give you my top 3 reasons what I like about it. Okay, first reason. I always see a lot of comments asking things like, uh, can I use a wall switch to control the lights of my ceiling fan? Can I buy and use devices from China? Can I do this? Can I do that? With Home Assistant, I don't need to find out the answers for all this can I. Instead, I'll straight away search for how do I do this? How do I do that? Because it's definitely able to do everything the other systems are able to do or any other use case requirements you can think of. It's just a matter of how. Second reason, all you need is just one single app. Regardless of how many device manufacturers you have in your setup, Home Assistant is able to bring all of them together into the platform. Coming from a SmartThings user where I can only integrate about 70%, now I can say it's 95% integrated. Now I have a very clean, centralized setup. If you are a little OCD like me, then the third reason will resonate with you. And that's the device management features in Home Assistant. With other smart home apps, when you add them to Google Home or Amazon Alexa, you cannot choose exactly what devices or scenes you want it to sync. So it will always sync over everything and end up you have a ton of devices on Google Home or Alexa that you don't need them to be there. In Home Assistant, you're able to customize this very easily, picking the devices and scenes that you want. Within Home Assistant, you can also easily disable or enable devices, hide them from your dashboard, the search function, the filter, and everything accessible via a web browser on a PC. All these small little things can be a pain on the other smart home platforms. So these are my top three reasons. If you're convinced now, then let's get started. First step is the installation, and there are many options to do that. If you are very tech savvy, you can install it on a virtual machine. It supports all the main hypervisors like VMware, Hyper-V, and VirtualBox. If you have a NAS from Synology or QNAP, you can install it on a Docker container. Okay, for all these methods, I will not elaborate further since this guide is mainly for newbies. I will focus on the two easiest options, which is using a Raspberry Pi or Home Assistant Yellow. Between these two, Raspberry Pi is like building a PC yourself. You buy all the different components, assemble them together, then install Home Assistant on it. On the other hand, Home Assistant Yellow is like buying a preview PC. All the hardware and operating system is installed for you, just power it up and you are ready to go. It's a very similar kind of experience as SmartThings or Homey. Basically, you just need to buy the hub and that's all. You also don't need to buy the Zigbee dongle while all the other options will require this. As long as you are using a Zigbee device, you will require this. The Home Assistant Yellow already comes with a built-in Zigbee radio, so that's another plus point. I highly recommend you to go with this option if you're not familiar with all this tech. Trust me, it's one less headache for you. Okay, after installation, you create a user account and ready to log in. Hopefully, no issues here. Don't be too eager to add your devices in yet. Do some basic setup configuration. And the first thing you want to do is to enable advanced mode. Advanced mode is just going to open up more configuration settings. In other platforms, by default, you can always access the app when you are not at home but not the case for Home Assistant. Again, there are other ways to do it, but for a start, the easiest way is to subscribe for the Home Assistant Cloud, which costs about 65 USD per year. With that, you can remotely access Home Assistant and also have it integrated with Google Home or Amazon Alexa. If you have other family members, go and do the necessary user management first and make sure that whoever needs to access the Home Assistant app is able to do so with or without your home Wi-Fi. After that, go to Settings, then Add-on to install some of the basic applications, although you might not need them at the moment. As a start, I suggest installing File Editor, Terminal and SSH, Meta Server, and Hex, which stand for Home Assistant Community Store. 
Okay, next, let's settle your Zigbee devices and you need to make a decision which Zigbee standard to use. Unlike other smart home apps at Home Assistant, you have options here. It will be mainly ZHA or MQTT. These are the two main popular ones. They cannot coexist, so you have to decide now. ZHA is the official supported one from Home Assistant, require very minimum setup. I started with ZHA for the first six months and everything is working fine. Then I start running into issues. Maybe it's because I'm doing all these smart home videos where I need to do a lot of testing, adding and removing devices from the other platforms. My Zigbee devices start giving me intermittent problems like going offline and not being very responsive anymore. I couldn't find out the root cause and in the end, I decided to just move everything to MQTT. I'm now about one month using MQTT and I must say it works a lot better. Overall, my Zigbee network and all my Zigbee devices are much more stable. Automations are also more snappy. You can go to the website and search whether your devices are all supported first. Okay, I'm going to sidetrack here a bit and talk about neutral wire because I think many people have this misconception. Wiring in a neutral wire does not 100% mean that it's going to act as a Zigbee router. I have a few Akara Z1 Pro switches that I have wired in neutral. You can tell that this is true because I'm able to see the power consumption. And my Zigbee network, you can see that these switches are still acting as an end device. They don't help in extending the network at all. I suspect switches that come with optional neutral is going to always act as an end device. Only those switches that require neutral wire to work will then be a Zigbee router. Anyway, if you are looking to extend your Zigbee network, you can always buy these cheap repeaters from IKEA. It's just a normal USB port or get their smart socket, they work as well. Okay, so if you decide to use MQTT, there are a couple of add-ons you need to install. First, you will install a message broker called Mosquito, followed by MQTT itself. Just search on YouTube for the latest install guide for the detailed step-by-step. -step. So once that is done, you are ready to add the devices in. If you are migrating from another smart home system, I suggest you to wait until it's weekend so that you have enough time to one-shot move all your devices over the weekend. Okay, regardless whether it's a new device or you're moving the device from another smart home system, I suggest to add them one by one. If you're using MQTT, go to the web UI, device page and click on permit all. For ZHA, go to the device page and simply click on add device. Put your Zigbee device in pairing mode. Then going to the devices page is where you can go into each of the devices and test out all of the controls. Give a consistent naming convention and choose whether to add them to your dashboard. Repeat these steps over and over until you have finished adding all your Zigbee devices. Then next is where you will start integrating all the non-Zigbee devices into Home Assistant. The amount of time this will take really depends on the number of smart home apps you have and exactly what are those apps. Some of them are really straightforward whereby you just need to put in your credential and you should see all the devices in already. But some are quite complex whereby you will need to refer to some documentation or even follow a video guide. I'll briefly share my experience for some of the integrations I did for my own setup. Okay, first very common one is Tuya. I'm sure many of you will have Tuya devices, especially if you are moving out from Google Home. If you are using a Smart Life app, then those are Tuya devices. First, you will need to create a Tuya developer account and there are quite a number of steps you need to do to set up this integration. And note that not all of the device types will be integrated over. For example, my smart oven, uh, hop and hood, all these are not supported. For smart lighting products, Philips Hue, Nanoleaf, E-Light, Govi, these are all automatically discovered on your network. Just put in your credential and that's all. Except for Govi, you need an additional step to retrieve the API key from the app. For Philips Hue, they are considered Zigbee devices and technically you can use it by MQTT, but I find that it works much better by its own Hue bridge, so that's up to you. Sonos is easy, Yo is easy, Bond is easy. For Google Nest, basically their doorbell and camera, you will need to follow a guide. And I remember paying a small one-time fee and maybe doing some troubleshooting. But for Google Chromecast, it's straightforward. Broadlink is quite difficult, but I have dropped Broadlink in my setup already. For Akara Wi-Fi devices like the FP2 Presence Sensor, you can just use the HomeKit integration very easy. Last one, SwitchBot. It used to be super difficult because you need to write YAML codes to call the API service for each of the device's controls. 
Now Home Assistant has added in the integration, so it's pretty straightforward. If you have any metal devices, make sure you have the QR code ready and you can only add them using the mobile app. If you are struggling with any integrations at this point, leave it as it is. You can come back to them later on, just integrate them directly to your voice assistant for the time being. It's fine. The last step is configuring all your automation rules. For the most part, this is quite straightforward for simple automations. The automations here has three main components. A trigger to determine how the automation will get started, any other conditions to meet, followed by the actions you want. So for example, I want motion sensor to switch on the lights only when the curtain is closed. My trigger is motion detected on my motion sensor. The condition is checking whether the curtain is closed. And then followed by the action is to turn on the lights. Able to set conditions is very useful. Try to make use of it as much as possible. Give you another example. So let's say if I want to set a button press for a device to toggle the on and off. But over at the actions, there isn't such an option for toggle. So what you can do is to create two automation rules. One is to check whether the device is off. The other one is to check whether the device is on. Then you execute the opposite actions. Okay, for me, I avoid creating scenes and try to use automations for everything. I actually don't understand why they designed the scenes in Home Assistant to be this way. So for example, I want to configure the goodnight scene, which is basically to switch off everything in the house. During the time when you are configuring the scene, it will literally switch off everything. So if you have a lot of scenes, then it's going to get very frustrating if you have a new device to add to all of them. Okay, that's about it. If you're planning to build a smart home from scratch or if you're planning to take your smart home to the next level with Home Assistant, I hope this 10 minutes quick start newbie guide is helpful for you. More home tech videos will be coming your way, so subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next one. Bye!